Hey, Hand, I heard you're looking for love. Well, I have this great friend I want to introduce you to. I think you two would make a really cute couple. Alright, cool. So does she like horror films? Uh, they do, yes. They? What the f- Okay then, does she like video games? They prefer to be called they. Oh, for fuck's sake. Alright, just answer me this. Is this a man or a woman that we're talking about here? They are a person. Uh, yeah, obviously. I don't think even you would try to hook me up with a fire hydrant or a tree. Is this a female person or a male person? They have no gender. What's that supposed to mean? Alright, prior to them becoming a they, which public restroom did they use? Well, they never really liked using public restrooms because- Okay, you know what? I was trying to be at least somewhat polite and discreet about this, but since you insist on being so fucking obstinate, let's just get down to brass tacks, shall we? Do they currently have, or have they ever had, a dick and balls? Because I'm not keen on sharing a bed with another male. Oh my god, you're a fucking bigot. I'm a bigot? Why am I a bigot? Because I don't want to have sex with a ladyboy? First of all, that word bigot involves hatred, and I don't have to hate a person to not be interested in them sexually. Anthony Hopkins, for instance, has my full respect and admiration. I loved him in every role he's ever played and would kill to meet him just once. But my admiration has never inspired an erection. Second, correct me if I'm wrong, but prior to this social justice bullshit, wasn't it a major talking point for the LGBT rights movement that homosexuality isn't a choice? Of course homosexuality isn't a choice. And I agree with you. And logically speaking, if homosexuality isn't a choice, then heterosexuality can't be a choice. So on what grounds do you think it's okay for you to judge me because I don't like the idea of sitting on a cock? Listen, ladies! Gentlemen! Lentlemen! I'm not having sex with a she-male! Relax! How many of you have ever had this annoying conversation? Even if you haven't, I'm certain you recognize it by now, as it's definitely one of the more sour notes in society's recent death now. It's been a while since I've said anything extensive about this gender identity nonsense. I've touched on it here and there, but I don't think I've really talked about it at length since my first video. And I've yet to address any of the delusional gender queer trendsetters like the special snowflakes in this video. Admittedly, Sir Sick, the social inequality crusader, beat me to the punch here. In fact, it was because of his response video that I was even made aware of this video in the first place, and why I felt inclined to add my two cents. So in paying my respects, I refer you all to his response linked in the description. He's an awesome guy, and his take is well worth the watch even if it means sitting through this horseshit a second time. Before we get started though, I'd like to make something perfectly clear. I acknowledge that gender dysphoria is a thing, and I also acknowledge the struggles of those who suffer it and of those who were born intersex. In fact, one of my closest friends of about seven years recently came out to me as having been born intersex. With the current state of our medical technology, he had no choice but to live with the gender his parents chose for him at his birth, along with the surgeries and hormone therapy regimen that came with it. So I sympathize with the struggle he has to go through now that he believes his parents chose incorrectly and has to make the transition. The only reason I don't call him she yet is because the idea still feels a little alien to me. But him telling me this has changed absolutely nothing about our friendship, nor has it diminished the amount of respect I have for him. In fact, I hold the position I do not just because I'm sick of this moral authoritarian mouth-breathing from people with victim complexes, but also because those who wear this trans status like a fashion statement only make the transition for people like him more difficult. So if you're watching, I hope you know that you're a stronger person than I am, and that none of what I see here is directed at you or anyone like you. With that said, let's dive right in. Just because I may present more femme doesn't mean that I'm any less they them. And just because you insist that you're they them does not mean I have to respect your delusion, especially in your complete lack of evidence. And a helping hand is going to explain to you why you don't understand pronouns or their use. You know what that thing where you're eating a meal but you're not really eating a meal, you're just kind of picking up food on the counter? My family and I were doing that one night and I just kind of looked at them and said, hey guys, I'm non-binary. <laughs> I don't have a gender. And I guarantee you the cross look that they gave you in response, which you're undoubtedly about to whine about, came much more from the fact that you brought that up apropos of nothing than it did from any measure of intolerance that you think you perceive. If I were sharing a meal in comfortable silence with someone, and they suddenly looked me dead in the eye and said, Hey Hand, the moon is made of cheese, I'd probably look at them the same way your parents looked at you. Because before they can acknowledge your supposed oppression, they would first have to process the ridiculous statement that you just made for no apparent reason. Consider yourself lucky that they didn't laugh in your face, because that would be most people's knee-jerk reaction. 
in my opinion, gender is a universe. It is a broad spectrum of planets and stars and sky that truly cannot be contained into a binary. Your opinion is irrelevant, Snowflake. Words have meanings, and those meanings do not change at your convenience. No amount of tantrums you throw over definitions you wish you could change is going to change people's intended meaning when they use the word gender or any of its derivatives in context. A pronoun serves a function, and that function does not hinge on your feelings. Allow me to demonstrate something for you. She is a bodybuilder. She is a slob. She has terrible road rage. She likes dirty jokes. She scratches herself in public. She drives a semi. She is a pervert. She works in a coal mine. Do you notice how the word she does not deviate from its intended meaning in any of those examples and how it only serves to clarify meaning even though I'm listing off traits and behaviors traditionally associated with men in our society? That would be because the word she, spoken in most any given context, refers only to biological sex. Nothing more, nothing less. And the arbitrary personality traits and feelings that you believe set your imaginary gender apart are irrelevant to the strictest definition of that word. The purpose of language is to communicate information and to convey meaning. Paired with the demonstration I gave at the beginning of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of what the function of a pronoun is, and why it's used the way that it is. It is a word with a very specific meaning that can be used to convey a fundamental piece of information about the subject to whom it refers, irrespective of her name, her appearance, her character, her beliefs, her sexual orientation, or anything else beyond her biological sex. It serves this function because we, as a species, still reproduce sexually. And as much as you like to think that we live in a fairy tale world where gender doesn't matter, it still very much does, even to you. As demonstrated in your constant feminist double standards and your insistence on fighting for equality only where it's convenient for anyone other than straight white men. And circumnavigating the use of those words does nothing but cloud meaning and breed frustration in those who want information that you refuse to give. My pronouns are they, them, theirs, and that's a non-negotiable. And they were all kind of like, okay. Yeah, and they're like, okay, because they care about your feelings more than I do. If they weren't your parents, if they didn't know you personally, they would probably be saying to you what I am saying to you. You are a fucking idiot. We don't use a system of language wherein you are free to determine your own pronouns, and to say it's non-negotiable makes you look precisely like the self-entitled fucking child that you are. I think one of the main reasons pronouns are so important is because other than our name, it's one of the main ways that people identify and call us. No, it isn't. And that mouthful of word salad that you just spat onto the camera just serves to prove my point. You have no fucking clue what a pronoun is or what function it serves. The main ways people identify and call us are not the trivial pronouns to which you object, nor even your name. These things don't tell me anything about you. The words we use to describe you, and for which we listen in order to determine if we want anything to do with you, are adjectives like intelligent, pedantic, educated, stupid, and artistic, and nouns like gossip, anthropologist, hermit, gourmet, and fucking douchebag. These words speak volumes more to your character than any imaginary gender you could possibly come up with. When most people see you dressing wildly out of the ordinary and proclaiming yourself exempt from the basic rules of language simply because you feel special, they do not find you brave. They find you pathetic, because it's clear to them, just as it's clear to me, just as it's clear to everyone watching this video, that this tantrum you're throwing is your only way to get attention and validate your existence, because you never bother to develop an actual personality. You are not spiritually deep. You are intellectually lazy. My pronouns are personally very important to me. Um, growing up, you know, enculturated into kind of a system that really subscribes to toxic masculinity. I was always uncomfortable with being called dude, you know, what's up man. Um, I was so bad at dapping people up, like, you know, how like guys like do that whole like, like that thing. I was so bad at that and it just like, I felt very alienated every time someone would do that to me. You see this shit? This is why nobody takes you seriously, SJWs. You insist that gender is a social construct, and then you throw around accusative buzzwords like toxic masculinity to wag the finger at a society to which you refuse to adapt and find your place, holding only one gender accountable for everything that supposedly makes you feel uncomfortable. You cry about how intimidated you are over something as trivial as a fucking fist bump because you think it alienates you, yet you have no problem at all parading around in a pink blouse, pink lipstick, and tacky costume jewelry out of some misguided sentiment of rebellion. 
The hilarious thing to me is that you're openly admitting what a special snowflake you are, and you don't even realize it. The only reason your pronouns are so important to you is because they are your pronouns. You don't want to be accepted. You enjoy thinking you're oppressed. It's a rush to you. I guarantee that if everyone agreed with you tomorrow and declared themselves genderqueer just so you could fit in, you wouldn't accept it. You would insist that you are somehow still unique because you are extra super secret special genderqueer with a twist of lemon. And the fact that you SJW halfwits assigned a large and arbitrary number like 72 to the gender spectrum faithfully attests to this because you're planning ahead to do just that. If you truly thought you were being oppressed, you would not be going to such lengths to make a spectacle of yourself. You would not be screeching to society and dressing in various degrees of drag if you truly thought your beliefs put you in any mortal danger. Do you think the Jewish people who were oppressed during World War II fought it by Jewing it up some more, wearing a yarmulke on their yarmulke, and speaking exclusively in Yiddish? No, they fucking hid, Snowflake. They knew what would happen to them if they were found out, because they saw it happen. They did everything they could to be as inconspicuous as possible, up to and including hiding in attics and cellars for months on end and living on table scraps. And the Nazi regime knew this, which is why they forced them to wear those Star of David armbands and routinely stop people at improvised checkpoints to ask them for their papers. Your oppression is a delusion. So when someone identifies with a pronoun, they're essentially taking their little piece of that broad universe and identifying with that. And so in using their correct pronouns, we're validating that, yes, you are right in your identity and you are important and we're respecting you. Validating, it says. I rest my case. You are validating your own existence. That's all you're doing. This has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with oppression. This only has to do with the fact that you know that without your special snowflake gender pronouns, you are unremarkable. You know that without your deliberately bizarre stylistic choices, you are not worth a second glance. You know that unless you are throwing a tantrum and making a fool out of yourself, you are not worth anyone's time or consideration. This is about you feeling entitled to recognition which you have not earned. This is a problem with you, not with the society in which you live. Coming into terms with my gender queer identity has been one of the most challenging but also rewarding things that I've done. You are lying to yourself. It hasn't been challenging because nobody is actually attempting to silence you. And the only reason it's rewarding is because there are public speaking platforms and media outlets who are falling all over themselves in a rush to put you on display to exploit your manufactured outrage for ratings and PR karma. I truly hope that when society finally starts seeing straight again, you will look back on this video and your victim complex with the humiliation that it warrants. Laverne Cox kind of famously said, misgendering a trans person is an act of violence. And it is, it's an act of psychological violence. It's a denial of somebody's personhood and a complete refusal to acknowledge their identity, whether intentional or not. Laverne Cox and her hilariously ironic name are both full of shit. With every word you speak, you continue to demonstrate that you don't understand the words you're using. Even if the word violence didn't specifically refer to physical harm, which it does, it would still have to be intentional for the definition of that word to be coherent. If someone flails their arms about them for whatever reason and inadvertently smacks someone in the face, we don't call this violence because it was an accident. It was not intentional. And apart from the initial anger and burst of adrenaline, any rational person would acknowledge that fact. People do not possess the ability to read minds, Snowflake. Nor is the use of the common pronouns he or she prefaced in their minds by your nonsensical butthurt. They don't know any differently prior to getting to know you, and would not think to refer to you any differently in a world where 99.93% of the population are biologically male or female, and an exponentially less quantifiable majority still identify as one or the other. I've said it before, and I will continue to say it until the day that I die. Offense is taken, not given. You are looking for a reason to be offended, because your butt hurt is the only thing that validates your existence. Without it, nobody cares about you or your opinion, and that terrifies you. And so, it is something that is entirely wrapped around our everyday lives. So, just walking into a restaurant and hearing someone say she, like, will happen within two seconds of me entering, which doesn't happen about any of my other identities. They're not gonna be like, oh, you straight person. You, you know, like that doesn't happen, but automatically someone will make assumptions about gender, which translate into pronouns, which mean that I will hear over and over again, people saying something about my identity, which is false. My God, your victim complex truly knows no bounds, does it? 
people don't say, you straight person, because that is not a distinction people regularly need to make about you, especially in first making your acquaintance. And if they are rude enough to talk about your sexual exploits behind your back, the stories about who you fucked speak plainly enough about your sexual orientation, at least in the context of that conversation, without having to add the caveat, oh, by the way, she's straight. But we are still a sexually dimorphic species, and the dynamics of gender relations is important enough to us both historically and currently that making that distinction, even without any assumptions about their identities, is still useful. As much as I hate it, we still live in a society where only violence against women is condemned by default, and where only men are expected to be chivalrous and sacrifice themselves for women's well-being and happiness. These things alone dramatically shape our perceptions of our encounters with other people on the basis of their sex. And even if that wasn't the case, it's still useful in conveying an understanding meaning. Simply by hearing the word he or she used in a sentence, you have already narrowed down the possibility of whether or not you know the person they're referring to by an average of about 50%. You are asking us to throw a wrench in the gears of language and cripple our ability to effectively relay meaning simply to appease your hurt fee-fees. Grow the fuck up. I think a lot of people associate expression with identity and sometimes that's not the case you know oftentimes I'm in situations where I'm not the most safe um, being able to express my gender identity and in those cases even in those instances where I'm wearing basketball shorts or sneakers um, you can't take my gender identity away from me because that's mine and not yours. I repeat, you obviously don't feel very fucking threatened when you are willing to dress as you are dressed now and say the things you are saying now on camera with your name superimposed in the lower third. The vast majority of people out there don't give a shit about your gender identity and don't care to take it away from you. The only reason they care at all is because you are touchy, abrasive, and fucking annoying. And nobody is going to want to associate with you when you are so easily offended over trivial bullshit. Except for those who are just as easily offended by that same trivial bullshit. And even those of us who are compelled to respond to you in this manner only really feel the need to do so when you start blaming your supposed oppression on people you don't even know and insisting that we change functional aspects of our language and our society simply to pander to your feelings. Allow me to introduce you to Donut Bob. As his namesake would indicate, Bob identifies as a chocolate eclair. Bob frequently has to be restrained and sedated, because you see, Bob believes that if he doesn't stay in an airtight chamber, he will go stale. And as such, Bob frequently tries to asphyxiate himself with whatever he can get his donut hands on. Where is the fucking line, Snowflake? Exactly how much of reality should we allow you to ignore, let alone permit you to spread your delusion to the masses, before we have to restrain you for your own good? We have the ability to empirically assess reality, and we also have the ability to convince ourselves of delusional fantasies. We do not have the ability to shape reality with the strength of our beliefs alone. Our survival depends on a healthy measure of pragmatism. We're not going to permit you to run headlong off of a cliff just because you believe you can fly, and we're damn sure not going to allow you to drag society with you as you plummet to your death. Even though at this point, letting natural selection run its course and burn out all the proverbial dead wood would probably be to our benefit as a species. So many different options for who you are and how to define that. So when someone chooses a personal pronoun that they identify with, Using that pronoun is a form of respect and a form of validation that, yes, this is your rightful identity, and I will respect that. You basically just said the exact same thing you said last time your smug face was on screen mere seconds ago, and saying it a second time doesn't make it any more true. Using your pronouns is not to show you respect, it is to patronize you and enable your delusion because you're too much of a fucking child to face reality. To allow you to censor and control other people's speech, especially with words you made up and shoehorned into the dictionary like mansplaining and manspreading, is to tell you that you don't have to give the same respect that you demand, and that society somehow owes you satisfaction just because you are offended by something that does not warrant offense. I say again, I respect the language by default. I do not respect you by default, nor am I required to. If you want my respect, you have to earn it. And kicking and screaming over your pronouns is a bad way to go about doing that. And I know personally when I get misgendered, by strangers it's one thing, but it's especially painful when it's people who are close to you. So when my parents misgender me, it's a knife in my heart because 
they're the people whose opinions matter more to me than anybody else's. Clearly, their opinions matter so much to you that you are willing to shove your opinions down their throats, tell them your pronouns are not negotiable, and dismiss any opinion that they came to organically through discussion and isn't precisely in line with what you want to hear. You don't give a fuck about their opinions. If you did, you would consider their life experiences. You would actually consider what they have to say to you, recognize that it's coming from a place of love and genuine concern, and factor that into your perspective. You would not stubbornly double down and screech at them like a fucking toddler who just heard that Santa Claus isn't real. You are attempting to draw a parallel between your imaginary oppression over your parents' annoyed reaction to your policing their speech and people whose parents actually disowned them and led them to suicide over their respective lifestyles. And as the child of an interracial couple who came together during a time when race relations were still pretty strained in this part of the country, I won't allow it. You do not know what that feels like. Your parents actually love you. They actually care about you. They did not disown you, nor did they ever even imply that they might. You don't know true oppression. I can see that very clearly in the way you speak and carry yourself. And not knowing how to combat it. It is constant and it is such, such a prevalent part of our society that being misgendered happens countless times in a day and that builds up really quickly and it can really be difficult for a person to hear over and over again because it invalidates your identity over and over and over again. Tell me, Snowflake, do you get to eat every day? Do you know where your next meal is coming from? Are you more than a few feet's distance from a clean source of water at any given time? Was an assault rifle ever forced into your hands as a small child? Has anyone ever actually threatened to kill you over your gender identity? Have you ever actually seen someone near you killed for having an aberrant gender identity like yours? Have you ever had to worry that you might be spirited away someday to an internment camp somewhere because of your gender identity? Have you ever lived in a country where it's socially acceptable to even joke about your gender identity, where you could expect no support from a social media mob who are just as outraged over trivialities as you are? Hell, are you even paying for whatever worthless gender studies degree you're working towards right now? Or does that fall onto the shoulders of your unsupportive parents as well? Cry me a fucking river. If the biggest threat to your safety and your sanity is having to hear the words she and her spoken around you, your life is cushy enough that almost anyone around you would be well within their rights to call you a spoiled fucking brat, because that's exactly what you are. Pronouns are important because they are the smallest and easiest way that you can acknowledge somebody's identity. No, they aren't. Because your gender has fuck all to do with your identity. You did not choose your gender. Your gender is of limited constraint to what you are likely to be interested in, and of absolutely no constraint to your pursuit of happiness and fulfillment. It does not inform the things you believe. It does not inform the ideas you reject. And it certainly does not bar you from having a voice, as indicated by this very fucking video. If you consider your gender to be any part of your identity, let alone a critical part, then you are a sad, shallow person and you are not worth knowing or listening to. And I also don't like that people call them their preferred pronouns because it's also not a preference. It's who they are. You need to use those pronouns. It's literally an extension of my arm or my leg. It's, it's just as a part of me as a vital organ. My identity, although you can't see it, it still needs to be validated just as much as you would validate the fact that I have five fingers or five toes. Is that so? Okay then, Snowflake, show me. Point to the spot on your body, or in your brain, that is the seat of your gender identity. Show me the gender queer organ that is so plainly visible and critical to defining you as a living creature. Your biology is what it is, and works the way it works, regardless of whether or not you understand how it works. The systems of language we observe, and the clothing we wear, these things are of human invention. But there was a time before they existed. There was a time before the colored fabrics, jewelry, and personally tailored hairstyles that you believe so accurately convey your gender identity. A time before we had language to explain our feelings or to label commonly observed phenomena in our environment. Yet we were just as capable then as we are now of identifying someone's biological sex to an astonishing degree of accuracy simply by looking at their face or hearing their voice. If you were to ask any given person what makes a face look male or female, they probably couldn't describe it to you with any amount of precision unless they have years of study under their belts into the psychology of those things. Sure, they might allude to some general features here and there, like the fullness of lips, size of the eyes, etc. Probably the same things we've been using makeup to enhance for thousands of years. And yet, there are exceptions to nearly all of these rules that we think we understand, but we can still distinguish a male from a female most of the time. 
It's not to say that androgyny doesn't happen. It does, and there are many factors that cause it. But if you were to ask someone why they can't easily detect the sex of an androgynous person, most of them wouldn't be able to put their finger on it. These are engines of instinct. We can do this because not too long ago in our history, it was critically important to our survival to be able to identify a mate and to assess their fitness to reproduce. And they misgender you as female because that's what millions of years of evolution are telling them that you are. And through all of this, I can't help but laugh at how much you people constantly contradict yourselves. You want us to believe that gender is a social construct, but you also want us to believe that your gender isn't a choice and is so pivotal to your personal identity that the mere utterance of the wrong pronoun makes you die a little inside. So which is it? Is gender a choice or not? Does gender have a tangible origin in our biology or not? Because medical science will tell you that it does. And if the different sets of genitalia in 99.93% of our pants isn't proof enough, there are detailed reports of every consistently identified morphological difference between men and women and how those differences lend to the differences in our behavior. If you disagree, then again, put up or shut up. Show me where this difference is in your biology that makes you verifiably different from the others of your birth gender, or I don't give a shit what you believe. Wake the fuck up, accept reality for what it is, and start making a personality for yourself instead of investing so much personal importance into something so personally insignificant. On a final note, thanks again to everyone who has supported me so far, and who would consider further supporting me in the future. As always, my social media links, crowdfunding links, and the link to my horror anthology are in the description for all those who are interested. And again, I apologize for the sparsity of my posts, but medical drama and complications in my personal life are to blame. I thank you in advance for your patience if things remain this way for the next few months as I familiarize myself with new software, the YouTube algorithm, and generally try to streamline my workflow to be more productive. And if I appear to vanish at any given time, please know that I do intend to return better than before and as soon as possible. For any updates on my process, and especially for any assistance I may request, please pay attention to my Twitter and Facebook feeds. Thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what you saw here, have a look at my other videos and leave me your thoughts in the comments. If you support my message, then please like, favorite, and subscribe. If you'd like to help this channel improve, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on Facebook with any suggestions. And if you'd like to support me more directly, please consider following me on Patreon. Links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all in my next video.